Is this cycle different? Hello and welcome back to Cryptolenium. Today we'll be answering that question and showing you some hard hitting data that may just blow your mind. So without further ado, please like and subscribe and let's dig in. So I wanna start things off by taking a look at Bitcoin monthly returns by percentage. From there, we'll take a look at quarterly returns. I'll define the different market phases and we'll take a look at which one we're most likely in. And from there, we'll take a peek at some crazy charts that you may not have seen before, which will hopefully help you see exactly where we are today and what that means for you. Okay, so starting with Bitcoin monthly returns. As you can see here, September is historically the most red month out of all the years that we can count, okay? There's not a single year where September has shown us double digit green returns. In contrast, October is one of the most bullish months as well as February. So October, otherwise known as October, is right around the corner. And with that said, September might be a good time to accumulate, but don't take my word for it. We want to take a look at quarterly returns. The fall and the spring are the seasons of gains. Now, for those of us who are not aware of the different phases, let's go through them really fast. So there's four phases. We'll start off with accumulation phase. So the accumulation phase, market features, the sentiment is uncertainty and disbelief. Price volatility is quite low. Transaction volume is low. What did we recently see with Solana? Well, Solana just recently hit historically low volumes. The accumulation phase begins after a significant market downturn. Prices stabilize as sellers exit the market, creating low volume trading environment. What did we see? Well, March, we kind of ran up. We've been consolidating since then. This phase is marked by a lack of clear trends with assets trading with narrow ranges. Long-term investors see this as an opportunity to buy assets at relatively low prices, anticipating the next bullish phase. For short-term traders, this period can be risky and requires patience as it can last from weeks to years. If you've been following whale data, you would see that some of the biggest wallets in Bitcoin have been buying like crazy. Not only that, institutions are in the same boat. The second phase, the uptrend phase, key features, optimism, and excitement, okay? Price trend is upward, transaction volume is increasing, and economic conditions are quite favorable. So in the uptrend phase, or bull market, this is characterized by a rapid increase in prices, new investors flood the market, driving up transaction volumes, optimism abounds, fueled by positive media coverage and general excitement. Do me a favor, do a Google Trends search on your favorite crypto terms and look at where they're at historically. Right now, media coverage is quite low for crypto, so it's safe to say we might not be here. Many investors enter the market during this phase to capitalize on rising prices. One could define this as retail. Temporary corrections are seen as buying opportunities rather than warnings. However, not all assets follow the general trend. Some may be affected by specific negative news. Phase three, the distribution phase, key features, overconfidence, greed, and uncertainty. This is when we start getting gassed out. Price volatility is low, although we're high up in the sky. Transaction volume is high, but pretty stable at this point. The distribution phase follows a bull run where the market reaches a balance between buyers and sellers. Some investors start to lock in profits while others continue buying. These are the people that typically buy the top, hoping for further gains. This tension leads to price fluctuations within narrow ranges. This phase is often the first sign of weakness after a bullish period. Savvy investors may begin liquidating positions in anticipation of the next downturn, the downturn trend phase. And phase four, the downtrend phase. Market sentiment is anxiety and panic. One could define this as the Luna phase if you were from the previous cycle. If you survived this bear run and you saw Luna, you saw three hours capital, you saw Celsius, you saw FTX, this was anxiety and panic and the price trend was downward. Transaction volume was high, but not in the direction that we would want, unless you're short selling. And economic conditions were unfavorable. Well, the Fed was raising rates over the last few years. We have been in a downtrend phase. The downtrend phase, or the bear market, is the most feared by investors. It begins when supply exceeds demand, often triggered by increased fear and pessimism. This period is marked by a sharp decline in prices, sometimes returning to pre-uptrend levels. Short-term investors may profit by short selling, but for most, it's a period of significant losses and depression. 
However, this phase precedes a new market cycle offering fresh investment opportunities. I'm not giving you any advice in this video. I'm just giving you some of my own personal opinions. This is all subjective. But one could assume that we're back in the accumulation phase. The pain, the max pain that we felt over the last few years, specifically in 2022, you could say that that's kind of blown over and the new wave of issues is yet to come. If you were to ask me, I would say we're in the accumulation phase where there's a lot of uncertainty, disbelief, not a lot of interest. Volatility is quite low. Transaction volume is extremely low and we're kind of just hanging around. It's pretty boring, but don't take my word for it. Let's take a look at some key data points before we close off. And this is going to blow your mind. Pay close attention to this chart. This is by far one of the most indicative charts that I've seen in a while. This is simply called alt buy signal. This line right here, this area shows Bitcoin's price. This is the alt signal, if you will. Below the 0.4 line is a good place to accumulate. Typically, according to this data, above the 0.6 line is a distribution zone. One could define the distribution zone as the area to scale out, where another definition of the accumulation zone is where you would want to scale in. Now, what do you see? you see how low we are here, right? So we're pretty damn low. If you just look at this and you don't look at anything else, you could probably close your eyes, throw an arrow at an altcoin and maybe turn a decent profit. With that said, this chart tells us that we are in a deep accumulation zone for altcoins, historically deep. This goes all the way back to January 2020 pre-COVID. Take a look right here. This was a hot time to buy. We are lower than this. Look at where alts were. Not financial advice, but this is, uh, you know, it's pretty interesting. Think about it. Something else I want to point out. What do you see here? For people who know technical analysis and understand different signals, there's something called a bull flag, okay? If you don't know what a bull flag is, do some research, but we'll quickly define it. This is the price of Bitcoin right now versus where we were at back in March, where it topped out, broke its all-time high, set a new all-time high, and has been consolidating since. People are worried that we're going to crash again. But for those who understand technical analysis, a bull flag explained. A bull flag forms during an uptrend. After an impulsive trend wave, the pull... When the price consolidates in a narrow downward sloping range, resembling a flag on a pole, typically traders use trend lines to define the range behavior in a bull flag. Let's take a look at the example below. So you have the impulsive wave, you have the flag, it's a consolidation in a downward direction until you reach a breakout point, which leads into another impulsive wave. Now let's go back. You have our flag pole and you have the narrow downward sloping range. Would you say this is bullish or am I just reading too far into this? I don't know. Let me know in the comments below. Something even more basic. When in doubt, zoom out. This is Bitcoin on 12 month candles. Okay. Going all the way back to January 2011. Now, what do you see here? The most basic pattern recognition skills can figure this one out. One, two, three, red. One, two, three, red. One, two, three, red. What does that tell you? I know it's so simple, but don't, don't overthink it. I know this is such a simple approach, but you might want to just sit here and stare at this. Pause the screen. Let me know what you think of this. This is a very, very, very basic approach to something that people seem to overcomplicate. And if you don't believe me on this, take a look at this. This is the Bitcoin balance on major exchanges around the world. This chart right here. If you zoom in, what do you see? The Bitcoin balance on exchanges is relatively consistent. You know, it drops a little bit, but then you go over here in current times. This is all the way back to 2018. We are seeing an all time low of exchange Bitcoin balance. People are storing it in cold wallets. People are taking it and accumulating so that you can't have any more. This to me is one of the most bullish indicators that I've seen in a long time. This is an indicator of deep pockets knowing 
what's coming next. And if you don't want to take my word for it, don't act on it and just wait and see. Maybe you'll catch it on the next cycle. And to close off, Bitcoin dominance. Once Bitcoin dominance reaches this key level or near it, below it, above it, within this area lies the key to your alt season. Come back to this chart, we are in a strong accumulation phase for altcoins and that is relative to Bitcoin dominance being at almost an all time high for this cycle. What do you want to do with this information? Do it, but just make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you on the next one.